Hi everyone. I want to make this video about body image, uh, food issues, and if you've ever struggled or faced any issues involving food and having a healthy and balanced relationship with food and with your own body. One of the most prevalent aspects of our cultures, mostly Western culture, but more international as we um, go forward in time, is the idea of dieting and conforming to a certain body type and then trying to follow a diet in order to change our body so that we can look like a more ideal version of ourselves. And the thing is that striving for a better body can often lead down a dark place in terms of rejecting ourselves and not being happy with the body that we do have or doing doing so in mean with methods or means that are very unhealthy or unbalanced like extreme dieting um even developing eating disorders and um, developing an unhealthy relationship with food and ultimately with ourself. And I speak from personal experience because I had an experience with disordered eating. I had anorexia when I was in college and I went to very low body weight and body fat levels. Um, I was quite undernourished and it was very deliberate. I was controlling my calories very specifically. I was having about 800 calories a day and I was extremely active going to classes, moving around on the campus and also exercising. I was very extreme and I took myself to very unhealthy levels. And it Fortunately, I sought the help of a nutritionist and a counselor who helped me to overcome and work through some issues. And that was over eight years ago. And now, thanks to God, I'm totally recovered. But it's, it took a, a long while and it was a long journey of a lot of research and reading and self-discovery, some difficult uh, feelings, working through difficult emotions and different issues related to my personal history and and uh, uh, loads of things. So if you yourself are struggling with eating disorders or disordered eating or you know someone who does, then just realize that it is a very deep psychological it, it can be a disease some some uh, specialists will call it a disease, but it's just a it's just really like something's not working well in our brain and the thing is that it takes on a life of its own and it becomes very strong and powerful and it can be all-consuming so basically it doesn't have to be that extreme even if you have an unhealthy um, relationship with food it doesn't mean that you have these um, you know you're going on extreme diets it can just mean that you feel uncomfortable when you eat because you think that it's going to make you um, get fat or it's it's you have this phobia or you have this conflicted relationship with food and you don't really know how to eat because you've always been following a plan or you've been following diets or you've been listening to what others have to say or whatever is the newest trend and um, through my research, I have recently come across a great book. It, this is a great resource that I want to share with you on this topic that can help empower you and to help you find some clarity for yourself. And it's called Intuitive Eating. And um, I ordered it uh, here in Dubai from the bookstore, but if you're in the U.S., you can probably go to the bookstore and find your copy. Um, it's called Intuitive Eating. And this book helps you to make peace with food um, so that you can develop a healthy relationship with food and with yourself. And this is a really helpful and insightful and, and potentially powerful life-changing book because it helps you to uh, explore some aspects of how you relate to food, how you use food, whether you use it as a coping mechanism, whether you use it to avoid boredom or to avoid difficult emotions. Um, if you are someone who binges, who overeats, stuffs yourself to the point of dissatisfaction, um, or if you're someone who uh, on the other side of the coin, you starve yourself, which is what I used to do. I used to deprive myself. Um, and 
whatever your relationship with food is, it doesn't have to be that extreme. But if you know that you don't have the optimal relationship with food and with your body image, and yet you know that you want to modify your body so that you can really be your greatest self and have an optimally healthy life, then it's worth for you to explore the 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 ways that you're using food to um, to handle other aspects of your life like emotions, um, maybe dissatisfaction in relationship or at your work or um, to avoid boredom or just you know to uh, because due to social reasons social pressures. There are different factors that influence this, but the truth is, the fact is that food is extremely important and it is the life source. Food is our way of living. Food is how we survive. And it's no wonder that it's so powerful and it has such a powerful hold on all of our societies. So if you are facing issues with food, if you do have body image issues, don't be so hard on yourself because food is not nothing you know food is food is everything when you come down to it food is life support it's energy it gives you it gives your organs the ability to function food allows your body to metabolize energy so that you can do every single thing that you do from your hair growing to your brain working to your heart beating your lungs beating to the digestive system functioning all of this requires energy cellular energy and all of that energy derives from the food that we put into our body the nutrition which is why nutritious foods nourishing foods are so key they are crucial to our empowered living to our wellness and to our balanced and optimal lifestyles so mm, the main takeaways from this book which um if you really if this resonates with you then i encourage you to seek your own copy um, the main takeaway is um, the objective is to make peace with food, to have a healthy relationship with food. And the main message is to trust your body, to trust the signals that your body is sending you. And the reason they say this is because when you, when you have been dieting for a long time and you've been fo following meal plans and you've been just following like the rules or the structure guidelines, it means that you don't have the chance, you cut off the connection with your body to understand what it needs and what it's asking for in terms of nutrition, in terms of satisfaction. Satisfaction is a huge factor and we tend to overlook that. Before reading this book, I had forgotten about satisfaction and I realized that satisfaction is crucial to feeling satisfied, to feeling fulfilled, to feeling content, to, to receiving something, being good with it and moving on with life instead of dwelling on not receiving what you wanted. And if you look at it as a metaphor, this, ex this extrapolates into life you know if you're not being satisfied with your food then you may not be satisfied in other areas of your life or conversely if you are not satisfied in special areas of your life you might be using food to give you that satisfaction but food is not the answer food is a tool if food is a life source and food is sustenance and yes food gives us great pleasure and it's and it's it fulfills a great need for 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 delight and sensorial pleasure but we we have to note the difference between abusing that and having a healthy relationship that is denoted by awareness self-awareness so basically, the main message is to trust your body. To That's why it's intuitive. It's about tapping into yourself and intuiting what you need. What is your intuition? Your intuition about food and what does your intuition in your body, what does the wisdom of your body tell you in terms of what you individually really need? Because maybe what the food plan is telling you to eat is not what it's not what your body is really wanting and again even in this it's it's really about reading the book because it does it this is a very deep um topic and they actually have a counseling center and they have uh coaches that work with clients to help them go through this difficult and um scary process um so 
um, essentially it's just you know the main message that I want to leave with you tonight is for you to um, consider trusting your body and if you are if any of this resonates with you then just to begin by asking yourself to what extent do I trust my body to what extent am I being very aware and conscious how am I being deliberate about my relationship with food and as you begin to explore this question and as you unpeel the layers and the surface of this deep topic for yourself you'll you'll find your own answers in terms of what does food mean to you and where is it filling in the gaps in your life is it filling in an emotional need the need for affection or intimacy the need for satisfaction or recognition the need for being fulfilled in another area of your life so those are really vital and powerful questions that I leave with you and I let you to contemplate them and reflect on them if this is something that is part of your life if you have if you you, you will know when you listen to this if this is something that's part of your life and again I leave you with the idea of checking out this book intuitive eating and it can really help to um, discover more of who you really are and to begin to love yourself more because as you begin to love yourself more you trust yourself and vice versa as you trust yourself more you begin to love yourself more and when that happens you feel more empowered you feel stronger you feel more confident and you feel more love for life so I hope you found some great value in this video and I'll talk to you soon bye